So the La Mer story, the La Mer miracle broth, I think it's actually a little bit cooler than how it might come across on social media. You'll find like tons of videos, tons of Instagram posts, people comparing La Mer to Nivea, and they do it in a way as if it's like this, aha, I got you, like some scam in the industry. But La Mer as a brand and La Mer's processing is actually quite unique and there's definitely more to it. I think the oversimplification of this dupe message doesn't really help anybody. Now, I don't want to sit here and suggest that La Mer is this must have product, must have brand. It's just, I think I want to talk about what they offer in a bit more of a reasonable way. Um, and then you can decide for yourself whether it's something you want to explore. I've had eczema since I was little. So finding products that have helped me manage that has actually been a challenge. And La Mer is one of the products that worked really well for me. So I think if you actually look around online and you do watch like YouTube videos from creators that have more like inflammatory conditions, you'll probably find that the feedback has always been really great for La Mer. And I think I've even seen some Reddit posts where again, people with eczema and those types of conditions also have had a lot of success. Of course, this is all anecdotal, but sometimes that's the best way to find out what's actually around and what's working. And of course this brand has been around for decades. So if it actually did nothing for nobody, I don't know that it would still be around after all these years they do ultimately have a very loyal client base. And it's for this reason that I feel a little bit protective of La Mer, which I know is a little bit goofy. You know, they're a luxury brand. Their prices are ridiculous. They don't need me to defend them. But it's just sometimes I think, you know, brands are actually putting an effort into creating something unique. And then that effort gets evaporated by social media influencers that aren't really giving them a fair shot. So a lot of the reason people compare La Mer to Nivea cream is because there are some overlapping ingredients. These are ultimately moisturizers. And I have nothing against Nivea. I think it's a great cream. If it helps you with dryness, dehydration, that's great. It's just, I think the scope of what they're targeting is quite different. And so with that said, if you are using La Mer or Nivea specifically just for dryness or for dehydration, it's probably true that you won't see very much difference in skin effect. And La Mer actually does include like a bunch of plant extracts and stuff. So it's also probably true that the risk of irritation is higher. But like with anything, skincare is quite personal. So an extract that could be quite soothing and calming for somebody could be irritating for somebody else. It's not a blanket rule. And I would say that La Mer very much leans into this story of inflammation without saying it directly and that is their target and their focus so if you don't have skin issues related to inflammation i'm not sure that you'll see very much effect or impact from la mer product having said that their ingredient claims do stem into into discoloration and hyperpigmentation too so i guess i'm speaking about this more so from my personal use my experience so with that little bit of context out of the way and again i just want to stress i'm not suggesting la mer is a must-have it's just a consideration, but let's get into the story of Miracle Broth. Although a little bit of a funny name, Miracle Broth is a proprietary ferment of marine botanicals and precious sea kelp. There is a bit of a unique, interesting, kind of funny story about the La Mer founder, Dr. Max Huber, who supposedly discovered Miracle Broth from suffering injuries on his own skin. By all accounts, and there are a few articles out there from like The Cut and L discussing Dr. Max Huber, apparently he was quite a lively and interesting personality to the point that he would literally eat La Mer cream. To be honest, like to me, a lot of the great people of the world, whether it be like Steve Jobs or even Brandon from Decium, they were eccentric personalities. They sort of saw their products in a way that a visionary does. So this kind of quirky backstory doesn't detract from La Mer for me. It actually gives it a whimsical kind of backstory and I appreciate it. You know, if you have a founder that loves their product that much, I'm all for it. Estee Lauder eventually went on to purchase the brand, but it's said that they still follow his process to this day. And apparently they went to a lot of effort to ensure they were able to follow his exact process. Some of the articles I've seen suggest that they try to kind of cut corners a little bit by reducing some of his steps, but they weren't able to get the same results out of the miracle broth. So I don't know how accurate that is, but you know, supposedly the actual process is very consistent. Giant sea kelp in the miracle broth is harvested off 
of Vancouver Island, and it's combined with calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron, lecithin, vitamin C, E, and B12, along with oils of citrus, eucalyptus, wheat germ, alfalfa, and sunflower. This cocktail, this cocktail of ingredients goes through a bio-fermentation process that lasts between three and four months. And the result is what becomes Miracle Broth. Now, I'm just mentioning all of this mainly because Mir Miracle Broth is a proprietary process for La Mer. So yes, you might see the same sea kelp ferment or the same sea kelp type ingredient in other products, but those brands aren't using La Mer's process. So whether that makes a difference or not, I'm not sure. Um, but that's very much where their claims come from is in their proprietary treatment of the ingredients. Now, I think where some people start to think the Miracle Broth story gets a bit loopy because beyond regular biofermentation, the Miracle Broth goes through some extra steps. The fermentation is said to also go through sun spectrum light and sonic energy from copper plates, which is designed to maximize the energetic potential of the ingredients. That doesn't sound very sciencey to me either, but I'm going to run with it because I do think the result is what it is. I have no idea if these extra processes actually do anything to the particles, you know, whether it makes them more absorbable or something like that. But even if this part of the Miracle Broth story is a bit of a fairy tale, I still think the actual combination of ingredients and the fermentation process is a very sound and sensible thing to do. So the resulting composition of Miracle Broth, like, it's awesome. I don't, I don't get why you'd have a problem with it. From what I understand, there actually is a scientific process called sonochemistry. This is where sound waves are applied to a liquid medium and this generates cavitation bubbles. These cavitation bubbles supposedly speed up reactions and could even allow for reactions that wouldn't occur under normal conditions. How much this actually improves Miracle Broth versus not using this sonochemistry, I guess we'll never know. That's probably something only Estee Lauder knows. And so even if you step back from the sun spectrum light and the sonochemistry, Algae as an ingredient has become kind of a defining skincare ingredient for repair and defense. Plus, we all know that fermentation now is widely used to increase the benefits of most ingredients. You'll probably notice that most people that actually speak about La Mer versus other brands, they tend to focus on the supplementary ingredients like petrolatum and all of those like moisturizing ingredients and what that overlap is. But it's actually the way La Mer uses the algae, the way it's processed, and that is the point of difference. So you can't discuss La Mer by ignoring the miracle broth, like that is the entire point. As I alluded to at the start, La Mer, La Mer focuses a lot on chronic inflammation and ultimately how that may lead to premature aging. So I think there's a term in the skincare industry called inflammaging. Miracle Broth is said to essentially form like a cocoon on the skin and create an environment where the skin is nourished by the nutrients in Miracle Broth to optimize skin repair. The thing with cosmetic ingredients and cosmetic brands is that La Mer is actually only allowed to say so much. At some point, if they go too far down the line of inflammation, or even if they use the word inflammation, they're actually entering drug territory and they're blocked from doing so just from marketing rules. In many ways, they are kind of forced to hide the action of Miracle Broth. So even if it is going in there and actually helping diffuse inflammation in the skin, they're not allowed to say it. They wouldn't even publicly disclose this information or these studies because it could cause them issues with the FDA. So I'm just mentioning that because I think a lot of people target cosmetic brands for not being able to prove their claims with as much evidence as they would like to see, but they're just simply not allowed. So at some point you have to take it on faith that what the brands do and what the brands say, how long they've been around for, the anecdotal, ed the anecdotal evidence, all of that has to count for something and you just have to take it on faith. Maybe Miracle Broth is just a story but maybe it's not and the only way you'll know how it works for you is if you try it now with all of that said i'm not trying to justify la mer's price points they are obviously super high probably for no good reason at the end of the day they are a luxury brand and their price points are set to appear as if they're a luxury brand I'm sure this Miracle Broth process isn't so costly that each you know, bottle of La Mer needs to be hundreds of dollars. My point here is just to say that Miracle Broth is not nothing. A luxury brand will have a story, it will create an illusion. You know, part of that pricing is to make it seem like it's more functional or more abundant in like specialness than like regular drugstore brands. I don't want to come across like I'm saying that's true. I think La Mer's prices are crazy. 
I buy them, I buy the products because I enjoy them, but I don't want to suggest that if you buy a cream, it's going to solve your life woes. That's not it at all. Just that it's not exactly the same or not, or not as simple as how some other people might make it seem. Now, interestingly, over the last few years, Max Huber Research Labs has started re revealing a little bit more information into the public, and they've started discussing a little bit more about mechanism of action and just sharing some studies that they've done. They've also started involving themselves with dermatologists and going to dermatological conferences and that kind of thing. But I think from what I can gather, trying to establish themselves as like a real clinical leaning brand. I'm of the opinion that if you do have an inflammatory condition, La Mer is probably worth trying as long as budget allows. If you're just using it for its moisturizing effect, then I mean, great, you know, again, if budget allows, but probably not as necessary. Now I'm not a scientist, so I can't kind of vet the validity of studies, but in one study that I found, I think from Max Huber Labs, they basically demonstrated that Miracle Broth had a similar action to 1% cortisone. And I found this particularly interesting because I actually started using La Mer instead of cortisone. That's the whole reason I love the brand and I love the products. If I have like a super, super active, like fresh flare up of eczema, then I will reach for cortisone on like day one and then basically wean off it straight away and switch to La Mer. And it does such a good job at soothing and like bringing my skin back to balance. Within the studies, they also showed some before and afters, which I'll throw up on screen. The tricky thing to navigate with La Mer is that Miracle Broth is woven throughout the entire brand. So it's hard to know which product is actually best to try to get the best result. I've been using La Mer for like 10 plus years now, and I've gone through a lot of the products in the range. Some of them have actually been irritating to my skin, whereas some of them are extremely healing. So there is still going to be some variation in terms of how you experience the brand. So unfortunately, it's not just a case of grab any product on La Mer and you'll be fine. There is still other ingredients going on and different delivery systems and so on that can influence how the products work in your skin. I might do a separate video on some of my favorite products from La Mer, the ones that actually worked for me and helped with redness and skin healing and that sort of thing. So if you wanna see that video, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I think that's probably enough defending this luxury brand. I didn't want to sit here and do this, but I just want to ensure that we're having like honest and well-rounded conversation. It's not my intent to like be this luxury brand defender. It's just my pet peeve when influencers hop online, they make these dupe videos, which are just done for clickbait. Half the time they've never even tried the products they're talking about. So it's just, if you're going to discuss skincare, ensure you've tried it or don't talk about it. It's as simple as that. Before I get too salty and shady, I should leave. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.